Ready? Ja. Smiles. Ready? Bang! Knees and eyes. I'm Jared with my lovely wife, Kara. Hello. Today we are doing a discussion about the Cold Steel Code 4, the Cold Steel 8010, and the Triad Lock, and if it's necessary. We do not argue whether or not if it's the strongest or not. We all know it's the strongest. Mm -hmm. um, I think they did testings on it that showed that uh, it could handle up to 800 pounds of force on the spine of the blade. And that's a lot, a lot of weight. It's like an elephant. But we have an a argument. Small elephant. Yeah, we <laughs> we have an <laughs> argument on whether or not it's even necessary or not. Let's get to it. We got a whole line of knives here, all different locking mechanisms. Yeah, locking mechanisms, and we're gonna talk blah. about each of them. Blah blah. Okay, <laughs> first up is the original back lock. The this, OG. The OG. This the is the Schrade Old Timer. And yes, it's an old timer. It's a it very, is an old very knife old as well. Yes, it is. <laughs> but it basically has the same thing. It uh you know what? First Your off, I do want to back up just one second. Because uh -oh. we are going to show a picture of the triad lock right now. <laughs> Bang! Picture! And that's the same locking me mechanism that's on both of these, specifically this one. And basically what it does is the back lock right here drops down into a slot that's right there. There's a slot on the right there. And basically what it does is the slot is grooved so that through time and through use, the back lock will only drop into that slot farther and farther and farther and farther. So in theory, not even in theory, so it will always just get stronger. And which is really cool. Now this has basically the same thing, but it doesn't have the stop pin back here like the triad lock does so it's in theory not as strong and also you got to use it two-handed so this is kind of out of you know so it's outdated let, basically let, let me let me speak on that issue yep. the two hand one hand operational issue because with these knives you saw jared can deploy them very easily and close them very easily I have way more of a likelihood with my smaller hand of coming down here to get the lock and having it eat my fingers on the way down. This one's not so bad. The other one is much worse. I'm not even going to attempt to show you. Well, show them. Show them why not, though. Well, if you take one like this, it doesn't have as much of a flat space in this area. Like this so one does. when I go to close it, the likelihood of it coming right down on my finger is is huge for me. And yeah. if I'm working and doing something anyway where I'm already needing 800 pounds of, you know, strength behind it, I'm probably also going to probably be in a situation where I may need to close it one-handed. And for me, it's not viable with these knives. Same thing with the old timer, which is where my point comes in. This is even worse because it's in the back over here. And yes, they are not as free dropping as the triad lock. So theoretically you can stop it like this and you know do what you gotta do but ultimately it either requires another hand or you to knock your blade closed on something yeah. which is what usually what i do so that's a big theme of this entire thing is strength doesn't always match best because best might be about how easy the knife is to use yeah so and keep like that this in one mind. i can use it one-handed like that, but, should you? but since it doesn't have that slot she was talking about, or the tang right here, if my finger's down here, it's getting cut. If I move right here, I'm still getting cut. I yep. have to put my finger all the way up here. So you have to have a big hand yep. in order to stop that blade. Mm -hmm. Now this one is a lot you more easy seeable. Big hands, big knives. This, <laughs> this one, <laughs> since it has this flat spot, it'll stop right there, which is really cool. This is a lot more safer to use, and it's a lot more thinner profile, a lot more everything for EDC next, use. Next, 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 now, next. another back lock is this is the Buck Marksman. With now, the SLS strong locking system. So this has the strong locking system, which is this back strap. And in order to break this thing, it has to break these two screws plus this pin right there. Side note, this is also very similar to the 8015 lock, which yep. is called the Scorpion lock. Some of you yep. may know that. I will throw a picture up right now. And it is a very similar system. Just yep. keep that in mind. Very similar. And that's cold steel also. Now, this locking mechanism, you can... Uh, tighten it and make it stronger and stronger. You can basically turn this thing into a fixed blade damn near if you wanted to. Now, I can deploy and use this thing all one-handed very, very easily, very fast. Now, 
to me, in order for this thing to break, I, I, mean, I gotta shred all three of those. So to me, this blade will snap way before this lock ever Ooh. breaks. Next one. True, and this true, is still true. very easy to use one-handed. So now, is that one any better? When this thing, if I use it that hard, the blade's gonna snap before the lock. So the lock works just as strong in theory. Next one, I have it. No, I stole go ahead, go ahead. It. I stole it. Go ahead. So this is our example for the access lock. This would it be- it is an access lock. It's our example to show the access lock. I gotcha. Lock. Yeah, you better get me. No. Yeah. Um, so this is just our example and it is one of my favorites and what one of what I would consider to be my best case scenario locking system. The reason why is because though the Omega Springs are known to here and there break, in our best case scenario, the lock is still a very strong lock and not only that, but it literally would have to break through this pin back here. It literally would have to bust through these steel liners right here to to break I, how much pro, you know again the blade is going to more likely snap before this pin this pin back here if that's you can see the it one moves. that's moving right now yeah well. it's going that has to literally bust through here to break and omega spring can be fixed that's not the same thing as a lock failing it's also the easiest to deploy and close one-handed it's also ambidextrous so for me it's going to be the easiest where it also matches its strength, which equals best in my case. Now, in theory, that one is a little bit stronger than this one, which yes. is the compression lock. I wouldn't even say in theory. I would have to really say that it probably... It's most likely stronger. I don't know if it's been tested, but in yeah. my idea, it's stronger yeah. than this lock. Now, this lock, yeah, it can be ambidextrous, but it's not it's, as easy. Like, it's look, a little wonky. Look, like For left-handed, I got to squeeze it all the way up here. Yeah. Now, in order for that to break... This is like a reverse liner lock. It's basically a liner right there, and then it falls into this slot right there, if you can see that. There's a slot on top of the blade. This liner falls into place, and now this liner has to break, bend, or be pushed out of the way in order to snap off. Now, I, if that does happen, I mean, that's a lot of force you're putting on that blade, but to me, I think the blade would snap most mm -hmm. likely before mm -hmm. that happens. All right. Next up is the titanium frame lock. Now this one, it's titanium and you know, it's the bar, it's going against steel. So it's steel on titanium. So the nice steel pushes against the titanium and it's harder than the titanium. The titanium is very strong, but the steel is still harder. So since it's harder, it rubbing against each other, it's gonna cause a grittiness. So it gives it less likely of a chance of it slipping out of place. Mm -hmm. Now, so, because of that, there's sometimes lock stick. And that's why they made the steel insert right here, where there's a little steel bar, or piece on the titanium. And that not, makes it where steel is hitting the bottom of steel. So it's steel on steel. So it makes it where there's not lock stick but it might not be as strong. Now, this is just a theory, but it might not be as strong as just titanium on steel. But in my eyes, it's pretty much just as strong. Well, You're using your hand strength. Well, let me say something to easy make a point here. If you were deciding between which one would be better for you, there's one very easy way to tell, and that would be, would you rather have it be maybe a little bit stronger and deal with a little lock stick or are you somebody who cares more about the most smoothest lock bar action in the world you're not sacrificing so much lock stick or so much strength that it really matters right. at the end of the day it's an easy deployable one-handed closing knife for both of them whether there's that little bit of stick or not and then if you are going for a full titanium on steel frame lock you just want to look for a maker who you know does it well such as chris reeves who actually patented the entire yeah. lock or invented and it. this one doesn't have any lock stick so we're not saying this thing has no, it lock doesn't. stick it's it just could if it was done wrong though. or well if you're putting that much pressure on it and that the the frame was going to be scooting over or any type Type of pressure that's going to be doing that you're going to get a little so lock really quick before you move on i just want to relay that back to the triad lock again because that is what we're kind of comparing to so if you look here this whole situation we were talking about with the closing and the this and the that this is so much in my opinion going to more than adequately be strong enough for anything that most people are doing yeah, the blade will snap before the lock fails in most both likely. cases in both cases honestly yeah. and also it's 
easier to to manipulate so now it, yeah it really another is. another locking mechanism is the subframe lock where they basically screw a piece of steel onto an aluminum frame um a g10 frame or whatever frame but it's steel bar and it's basically the same thing as a frame lock now would you consider same it idea. equally as strong as a frame, regular yes. frame lock? No, I would say it's a little bit weaker. Because but, it's a separate part screwed in. Yes. You have more chance of stuff of, happening. But you're going to have to either have that lock bar scoot over from pressure mm -hmm. or the screws snap off. You can do that one. Next up one. is the liner lock. Now, the liner lock makes it to where now your hand strength, because with these ones, you also it have It makes your, it to where what? Okay, I'm going to explain. I'm sorry. I just this, with here. the frame lock you have the strength of your hand also. So when you're using pressure, mm -hmm. that lock bar has to open up in your hand. So as long as you're putting pressure on it and you're squeezing it, it's not gonna scoot over unless if it's stronger than you. So now you lose that with a liner lock because now I can't squeeze the liner or the frame that's right there. I can't squeeze it and hold the pressure in. So basically a liner lock has to, the pressure has to push this liner over or bend it, snap it, whatever. I still think in theory, the blade, especially on this knife, is going to snap before it pushes this liner over. So my opinion on the liner lock is that it's a really nice, um, it's usually cheaper on knives. It's a nice budget alternative to the frame lock. I personally think frame locks tend to be easier to um, close just because there's not a liner in your way of getting to that bar. So in this circumstance, I would say that the frame lock is still easier than the liner, but I would say I it's a little stronger too. It is. I would 100% agree yeah. with that. So again, I would still probably choose liner over triad only because of still, it all comes back to that one handed thing. And just know that we love every single one of these knives and every single they one of these locking mechanisms. They all hold a special place yeah. in our heart. So obviously we have them all that does not take away like that doesn't say like oh i would pick this knife over this knife because i probably wouldn't i'd probably pick this one to go to work with because like i said mm -hmm. that the blade is gonna either way i'm not gonna be doing something that's gonna break that liner off so it doesn't matter and this one's very comfortable too so true you, you have to you remember gain comfort. comfort yeah you gain comfort with a liner lock all right our last one example here is this uh it's an auto button lock but it, it's also going to represent our manual button lock knives as well so or wanna, right or yeah any type of button lock that's what i'm saying you go auto manual whatever just a button lock sorry go is ahead that not what i just said probably <laughs> Explain the button lock. I'm not mechanically. Okay, inclined. well, with this one, this one has this is the stopping pins. You see it right there? Bam. It locks up on the frame. So you have that locking up against the frame, and then there's a button. And the button basically, like say, if this is the button right here, this is the slot on the bottom of the blade right here. It's pushing into that that slot. And in theory, or not even in theory, it's constantly pushing its way into that slot. So it's only making itself stronger. So as time goes on, the button that's pushing this way is just getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Now, in order to fail that, you would have to be putting so much pressure that it's gonna break that pin off or push it out of the way from the pressure. Now, I think that most likely the blade is going to snap before you break that pin or push it out of the way. And if you are using your knife that hard that you are gonna push that thing out of the way, you know, say if it was gonna fail before the blade failed, you should most likely be using a fixed blade. And you could say like, well, yes. then I would want a triad and maybe, lock. And, but that's a good point because you maybe do. that is you. Yes. My point and our point is just that, is it really the best just because it's the strongest? Right. So we've hit all these examples at this point. So I'm going to wrap up with my final opinion really quick, which is going to be that I think that this is still a relevant locking system. I think that it has a place um, for certain people and if it's your opinion that it's the best knife for you then it absolutely is I can't argue with that because it's definitely strong. No one is arguing that what I'm arguing and what my opinion opinion is is that it's not the easiest to use necessarily for certain people with that said i think best is going to equal an equal amount of strength and an equal amount of simple usage yeah. so for me that spectrum meets itself somewhere between a frame lock and an access lock ultimately i would pick a frame um in my uh, case i'd probably do the, the steel 
just be the steel uh, lock bar insert only because I do really enjoy the smooth action as well. That's something that is important to me. Um, and yeah, that's me. What about you, okay, baby? With me, I like them all. Uh, honestly, <laughs> I use them all. And I really like this trial. I think it's very easy to manipulate. I have a big enough hand to do it. Yeah, but keep, that being keep said, reminding though, me. Now, that being said, though, if you put five knives in front of me and say, which one do you want? And they all have different locking mechanisms. The back lock is most likely going to be the last one I pick. Not saying I don't True like that. this knife. I love this knife. I even wanted to buy this knife for Woodland Task Clan. I probably still will wind up buying one of these because I love it. I think this is awesome. And I love the thought of having something so strong like that. I love the thought of that. But Manly. when I'm out working and I'm out working one hand and stuff, I want the most easiest pull out of my pocket, deploy, use, and put away yes. as fast as I can. And I can do that with all of these, even the triad lock, but... Just something about it's it. It's probably the least safe <laughs> to well, do it it's with. Not even, yeah, I guess it's probably the least safe, the most likely to fall on my hand, but maybe not. I don't know. I just know I like action. I like mm -hmm. smoothness. I like the way knives feel. I like the sound of them. Just like even the triad lock. I love the sound of that lock snapping into place and that reassurance of strength. I love that, but it's still going to be probably the last one I pick because I know all these blades are most likely going to snap if I'm using them True. that hard before the lock fails. So there you go, that's my opinion. Ow. That's our opinion. Thanks for having us guys. We love you guys. And I know this was a little bit of a rant, but hey, whatever. That's what we do here at Native Knives. Thanks for watching. Bang.